What is going on, guys? It is your boy Appetit today on Hack in the Yard, not Shoe House, bringing you guys some gameplay. But we're going to be talking about very important things today. We're going to talk about five things pro players do that if you don't do, well, you should be doing it. <laughs> you know, because nah, seriously, these are really uh, important things and important tips for you guys. I hope you guys seriously enjoy this video. If you do, uh make sure to um drop a like so for the first thing we're going to be talking about for the first tip is going to be talk we're going to be talking about shouldering and basically taking advantage after you shoulder so shouldering in call of duty pro players do it all the time it's basically you're getting info so i shoulder like this this is basically a shoulder in this game you got to be careful though because you can die pretty quick so you have to do little quick shoulders and usually when I shoulder, I like to do a double sprint with it, sort of like this. And obviously, sometimes I don't even go for the look. I just hope they shoot me so I know they're there. <laughs> so when I do this very quickly, it's almost impossible to kill me. And I can't really see well, but if he shoots me, I know he's there. So shouldering is really good to get the info like this. But then once you know the person is there, you can you can challenge him. So I'm going to shoulder this guy. He knows I'm here. Okay, well, he ran away from me. And then I'm going to challenge him right after. And the reason this is really good is because when you shoulder someone, you obviously know they're there. And usually when you jump around at someone, you have the advantage. So I'm going to jump out of him, kill him. Bam. It's easier said than done. It obviously takes a little practice. But shouldering is good for that reason. You can challenge them after once you know they're there. And usually I made a video, a couple of videos about this. But jumping around a corner is sort of a camera and it's hard for them to react. You will usually win that gunfight most of the time as long as you hit your shots. So shouldering isn't only good to win gunfights, but it's good to gain info to know where people are without dying you know if you just walk out like this in the open to see if someone's there there's a good chance they're going to kill you because you, they have an easy line of sight but if you just slowly just peek you can get that info and still be alive the next thing we're going to be talking about is mini map awareness so mini map is very huge in call of duty you always want to be paying attention to your mini map you always want to see where your teammates are where shots are being fired at obviously in this game in public matches right now uh there is no red dots on the mini map and they said they're supposed to put that in but they never did and hopefully they will one day soon but in competitive matches there actually is uh, there is actually a radar and when you play SD wagers a uh, tournaments when you play scrims uh there is a radar so you can see uh where your enemies are and where they're shooting from so that's very important for the people for you especially to know where they're shooting at but also not only to see like in the radar like oh where they're shooting at and where they're shooting from but also to know where your teammates are at and i feel like mini map awareness is very big in public matches like pubs for just knowing where your teammates are at because you can use your teammates as uh knowing where your enemies are at so my teammate just died obviously knows the guy here and now sort of like i'm lingering the map right here you see i'm lingering on the right and my teammates are all to the left meaning they should spawn on me and you can see one guy did spawn on me there's another guy over here as well my teammates don't know that because they didn't see him and i did but as soon as i kill this guy you, as you can see my teammates are all on my side now so this easily just states that now they're all on this side we just flipped them out so knowing your mini map and having good mini map awareness is very very big in general not only in uh, competitive matches and stuff like that but also in public matches like mini map is a huge factor in just having awareness on the around the map and knowing where people are at so my teammates just died obviously like there's not none of my teammates are here this is just a very easy small example i know there's going to be people and enemies lingering around the area so I just got to be ready to anticipate a gunfight, get ready for anybody, and I just got kind of smoked. <laughs> so for next thing I'm going to be talking about, guys, tip number three is pre-aiming and holding a position. So in this game, in Call of Duty, when you're pre-aiming, it's usually good. You want to pre-aim a lot of things. You want to pre-aim around corners. Uh, you want to maybe hold a position like this. Usually, in most case scenarios, you want to pre-aim when you're in a head glitch. You don't want to pre-aim out in the open. You don't want to be like this. You remember that guy that, that was sitting like this and I came around the corner and just jump shot at him and kill him? Yeah, you don't want to pre-aim out in the open like this. You are basically a free kill. If you're ever pre-aiming, most of the time you want to be in, in, in a good position, a position where you have the advantage. So let's say right here, it's sort of a head glitch. Um, most head glitches, it's fine to pre-aim. Uh, you can get kind of camera, but it's a lot more, it's a lot more difficult to. Uh, this You can see my body, it kind of peaks kind of wide here. So usually in head glitches, it's fine uh, to pre-aim. You see like out in the open or like, this is when you can catch your team. Like, it's fine to be out in the open sometimes if you think you're going to catch your opponent off guard. Like, this is a good off angle. And that goes off to, that goes like back to like off angles. People don't really use off angles in Call of Duty. And that goes to, and that like brings me up to talk about off angles. Like, off angles aren't really talked much about in Call of Duty, especially in, uh, in Modern Warfare. But 
off angles are very good to use especially in just in general like war two off angles were really huge off angles is basically holding a weird angle that will catch your enemy off guard so usually like someone comes around a corner they're gonna check this spot or they're gonna check this this corner over here but if i'm sort of out in the middle of both um i can catch them off guard and get like a free kill of them just checking like checking one of these corners so off angles are really good to use but that's like the only time you should be out in the open pre-aiming in general you want to be pre-aiming behind a head glitch and even when you're pre-aiming behind a head glitch sometimes it's, it's good to keep moving because if, if if your opponent comes challenges you you want to be able to like back up to the heady more or like strafe out you don't want to be just like you want to make it hard for your opponent to kill you you want to make it hard man and in this game in call of duty in general cameras are a huge thing it's not as bad on land but cameras are a big thing and basically if a guy jumps around a corner or or challenges you around a corner very quickly even though you're in a good spot in a head glitch or you know in a good position um pre-aiming can get you killed sometimes it's best to stay moving and try not to be on the open. Like right here, preaming this in this position is good. Um, but obviously, like I don't want to be preaming here. Like I can hold this angle, don't see nothing, get out of here. I just don't want to. You want to keep sort of moving and strafing around. You don't want to be on the open. Don't make it an easy kill for your opponent. Now, for tip number four, the next thing we're going to be talking about is taking the right challenges. Now, it also depends on your gun. I feel like it's gun dependent sometimes because obviously, if I have a submachine gun, I can take a closer gunfight. If I have an AR, even though ARs are still pretty dominant close range. Uh, maybe I don't want to take that gunfight. So basically, in Call of Duty, there are good challenges and there are bad challenges. I mean, you can say that probably for any any game in general. Um, I got to take the, the gunfights that I know I have a better percentage, a better chance of winning. Now, that comes with sort of practice. And the more you play, the more you understand that, realize that. Like, oh, what are good, what, more, what are more favorable gunfights for me? Um, the more you practice, the more you play, the more you'll learn. Like I said about that. Uh, in Call of Duty, oh my God, three piece in Call of Duty um usually having the higher advantage or i mean in any game having the higher advantage is usually a better position but that's not always the case but in general better position is good uh like right here if I, as a sub i can't take this gunfight if a guy comes around here with an ar he might win it if he preempts me he could win that gunfight so basically like or if i'm a sub player and i want to maneuver around the map you see i shouldn't i shouldn't run around there or i shouldn't peek that because there's a good chance i'll lose that now if i take the gunfight from this head glitch over here i will probably win it so, you know, it's a lot about taking the right challenges. You got to understand what are the favorable gunfights. Obviously, like I said, that takes practice. That takes, you know, just learning the map, learning the game. Um, you're never always going to be in a favorable gunfight. But, you know, you want to try to be in favorable gunfights all the time. Like, that is the goal. That's how you win more gunfights. That's how you position yourself to be in better spots. It's taking, like, a gunfight right here to here. Like, this is ass. Look, I'm about to die. Like, I almost lost that or I almost died. Like, that's a horrible gunfight. Now, if I take a gunfight here to here, now we're talking more like, all right, it's a 50-50, maybe a 60-40. I have slightly a higher advantage over him, so I could probably kill him. So this is more what I'm talking about. Like a quick example in Search and Destroy, um, usually what I do is I rush here and I cut to the right. I never take that gunfight head to head. And I'll jump on that box that you see where that guy is. And I'll jump on top of the green and challenge it from that higher angle because I know that's a more favorable gunfight for me. So it's a lot about taking your, you know, taking the right challenges, taking the right gunfights. Um, you know, you just got to make sure you're in more favorable gunfights. And like I said, it just comes with experience. It kind of it comes with learning like the maps and understanding like, all right, from here to here, this is a pretty good gunfight. From here to here, it's a pretty good gunfight. From here to here. Overall, this is a very good position to be. I have, I have favorable gunfights. Now, if I'm on the open, if he comes up here, I'm dead. If he comes up here, he can, he can camera me. I'm dead. You know what I'm saying? So you want to put yourself in good positions and obviously taking like just good challenges. Like you see, like if a guy's up here, I'm not, I'm gonna lose this. So I'm not going to take this challenge. So instead, what am I going to do? I'm going to take another route. I'm probably going to hit bottom mid here and hit, hit the, hit this up here. Now I have a favorable gunfight. Then bam, I kill him. All right, guys, I don't have enough time to do the last tip on that map. So we're on to a new map. So for tip number five, the last thing we need to be talking about is anticipating where your opponent's going to be. And that's definitely going to come with experience on the map. But just in general, it's something you actually have to be aware of and pay attention to. And it's kind of how you're going to work the map in general. So to elaborate more on it, when I come into this arch, there's going to be various locations where my enemies can be. So obviously, I'm going to want to check this right side here. Okay, there's no one camping these little corners. Now I'm going to shoulder this spot. Okay, there's no one to, on my right. There could be now a guy here. There could be a guy probably behind this white van. There could be a guy right here to my left. So now I'm going to shoulder wide, see nothing to my left. Now I'm going to continue to work this area. So I can easily shoulder here, see nothing. Now once this whole area is cleared out, there's a lot of people that love to sit right here. 
So now for my next thing I'm going to check is I'm going to go right here and challenge this if there's a guy there. And I think the guy just shot me in the back and he just flanked this. So when you're working the map, basically, you're going to want to check a lot of spots. You're going to want to check a lot of areas. And you're going to want to... That's basically how you get kills and how you have your awareness game up. Now, I'm going to anticipate more people here. The hill is obviously here. So I'm going to, you know, hit some pre-aims, check my corners, uh, just maneuver around the map. And this is a huge thing. It, what I feel like makes uh, pro players very good and player like pro players good at getting your kills. So as soon as I came into this room, you saw I checked my right. I didn't see nothing here. Check my right. If there's a guy to my left, I can easily now, as soon as I see nothing on my right, I can easily now challenge my left. So that's a huge thing. And I feel like it just, it comes with a lot of playing and a lot of practice, but hopefully you guys get the gist of the idea. And I hope you guys, you really apply it to your gameplay. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. These are five things pro players do all the time. And I feel like this can really elevate your gameplay. I know it was a little bit on the longer side and I, I apologize for that, okay? I really do. I, I don't like making my videos too long, but hopefully it was informative and hopefully uh, you learned something new today and you can apply it to your own gameplay. And you know, I really appreciate everyone who supports these videos and support me. So make sure to drop that like if you really enjoyed and you learned something new. Subscribe to the channel. If you would really like to see more of these videos, I can definitely do some in the future. Uh, just make sure to comment down below if you like it. If you would like to see some more of these things, I'll definitely be reading my comments. So I hope you guys all have a wonderful day. This has been your boy Apathy and I am out.